Hello everyone, it's Kay again and I'm here today to bring to you, hopefully, a tutorial on how to make the Gatefold album. Now it's not my idea, there are lots of people out there that have done this, but it is using envelopes and the person that I watched doing this originally was Dawn's inspiration here on YouTube. I have, however, modified it to suit my taste a little better and hopefully simplified some of the instructions and I hope that you will give this a try having seen how it all comes together. Basic ingredients, a digital kit or some design paper that you love and want to put onto whatever medium you choose to use. You need some good adhesive because there are a lot of components that need to be dealt with. You need some C6 envelopes with a, the V flap on the back. It's no good having the square flap. It's got to be the V neck flap because that is the piece that forms the um, page flip, if that makes sense, but it'll become clear very soon. You need a brayer if you have one or a good boning tool that would allow you to put pressure onto the paper as it's put onto the card stock. You will need three pieces of strong good quality card although there are lots of components and whatever D DSP you use or Digitic kit you use it does help strengthen the um, album uh, it, it obviously the, the stronger quality card you use the better it feels at the end of the journey you will also need a scoreboard and a cutter of some sort. So I think that's about it. Now for the purposes of the video, needless to say, and to keep timing to um, its absolute minimum, I've got everything here. I've done a lot of preparation work, but I will talk you through what I've done. The digital kit I'm using is Dragonfly Dreams. Excuse my dog. She's going to be like this because window cleaning is going on and it drives her nuts. However, the digital kit is from Artie Mays on Etsy and is a fabulous, fabulous price if you like the look of the kit. And I have used a huge amount from it. Um, which, you, which you will see and how much or how little you, you use is entirely up to you and how many envelopes you use is again up to you because you have what amounts to almost a half inch gusset either side of the journal which will allow you to put in as many as 10 envelopes either side if that's what you want to do. So having got the three pieces of A4 card or 12 by 12 card, if you don't mind doing a lot of cutting, you need to trim down your card size to 10 inches by f 7 inches. That's right, 10 by 7. And you need three pieces of card in all. So what I've got here, and I've stuck all my DSP together, is that size of card. And you need to, on one of the pieces only, once you've got them cut to size, is use some really good adhesive. I'm using red line tape for each of the sides of one of the pieces. And then a horizontal line on the back and this becomes the back of your gatefold album so I'll put that out of the way for the moment and then on the other two pieces you f fold them by creasing on your scoreboard now these are the, the other two 10 by 7 cards 
you crease them at five inches or score them, beg your pardon, at five inches and four and a half inches on your scoreboard and you do that on both sides so what you end up with is a five inch size and when you've burnished and folded the score lines you have one side that is shorter than the other and this is what we're going to put onto the back page to form the gatefold aspect because you have two of these and they then become the front covers of the album like so and all I've done here is pre-cut my designer paper you need well if you like a border around your papers then the mat for the gate fold frontage is I'll find my paperwork here so the front gate fold is four and three quarters across by six and three quarters and that leaves that lovely lovely edge there all around on the back of the album you need a back cover mat and a front cover mat and they measure nine and three quarters by six and three quarters so what we'll start with is putting together the back part of the album so you have your 10 by 7 card, place your tape, your red line tape, as I've got here on either side and then across the centre and then fold it away from you before you take any backing off your tape, obviously. Then I have my back sheet here. And this again is nine and three quarters. I just want to make sure I've got the right numbers for you. Nine and three quarters by six and three quarters. I have applied my red line tape, but I will also apply some wet glue because I really don't want this to go anywhere other than where I want it to be. And of course now it's going to play up a little bit, as always. Come on. Let's just open it as much as it'll go. Now it's up to you what medium you use. I just find the red line tape is such a lovely thing because once it's anchored it really doesn't give up on you and then using the wet glue roundabout just adds that extra bit of security and makes it all a lot easier to deal with so what I'm going to and wiggle room of course which we all love I'm going to take off the bottom band to me and one of the side bands of the DSP like so and then I'm going to take off these two middle ones but I don't want to take off that other edge at the moment okay so that is the top edge always check the side the lay of the paper especially if it's very patterned because you don't want to make any mistakes and then the edge that is non-sticky I'm going to lay down and try and get my margins where I want them to be very very carefully because as I say once that red line stuff is anchored it's frightful to move now as you can see here it's gone down quite nicely what I'm going to do then is find the edge 
of that red line tape at the top like so and just squidge it out between the layers and then I want my brayer and I'm just going to run over that very very gently and this helps blend in the glue and the tape so that's that side done nicely as you can see and we bring it up back again to where you have the horizontal line of the tape okay quite straightforward now again I will put on my wet glue in amongst this area the reason I've got the horizontal glue there will become very very clear very very soon all over all over oh no no we're not that won't hurt though put that to one side sorry put that to one side there are other things we have to do before mm. yeah apologies we finished that bit we're now coming on to the, the other side the inner aspect of the album I told you I was brain fried. This weather is no good to man, no beast. My dear dogs are really suffering in this heat, but I guess everyone's are. It's just too much for them, unfortunately. So I'm going to peel off these two sides, like so. Take off the middle very carefully. And now we have to do some quite serious lining up because what you want is the first side of your gatefold and on the back here, on the shorter side of the gatefold, I've applied three strips of the red tape on the outer edges and on the folded edge very carefully avoiding that score line if you possibly can and again in between there I'm going to put down my wet glue for extra anchorage and I'm also going to stand up because it helps to line up and what I'm going to do I hope, I hope you can see I'm going to take that folded edge directly to the base of the album and then squidge that down before I've allowed it to fall onto the back page. And if you do it that way, you're not stressing the card at all and it will finally settle where it's comfortable to settle if that makes sense it's so easy to warp card as you're working with it but with the dual aspect of the glue on the back and the um, red line tape it's very easy then to put this together however what I should have done was put down the ribbon for the closure but we can that at that point you would anchor your ribbon onto that horizontal line and keep it away from the rest of the ribbon but there are from the rest of the album but there are other ways around that so we won't panic you then go to the other side and do exactly the same thing with the other side of your album now depending on whether you're left or right it would depend on where you started with this but as long as the two pieces are anchored and level and where they need to be it really is academic which side you anchor down first lots and lots of wet glue with my red tape making sure that my designer paper is where it needs to be and again I'm taking it down to the edge 
of the paper and you need to do that as carefully as carefully as you can and then just rub along that edge there as I've done lift it up and just gently let that card go where it needs to go brayer again because it's just so much easier to make sure that all your ink is spread out where you need it to be now I'm going to put down that piece of red line tape over these two edges here and you just put it down roughly centrally if you need to measure then do by all means I'm just putting it down for the sake of the video and timing where I think I want it to be and then I'm going to peel that off I've got my ribbon here where I want it to be and it's just a very pretty blue in keeping with the rest of the album. You need quite a sizeable bit and I suggest you measure it when you've put everything together because you need it to go across the back, across the front and then finally tie. So you need it to be a, a good length. Now I'm just going to pop this down on top of my red tape and I've got oodles of room around it because it's wider than the ribbon and I'm going to run that across either side just like so avoiding your score lines where you possibly can but at this point it really doesn't matter if you go over that edge at all then I've got, I've got my other piece of designer paper to go into the main body of the album and you'll see it sits there quite nicely I've put my red tape on it you can do any extra trimming that you might want to do when you've put the body of the album together but that is how it's going to look which then covers the workings of the ribbon and it gives you something nice to look at inside so I have put my red tape on as you can see I'm going to add my wet glue like so keeping always in mind the direction of your patterned paper I want to start by taking off one of the edges and then all the side backings like so and the downward the horizontals to get everything ready to go this time I've got my red line at the bottom which is closer to me so I'm going to pop that down leaving the border that I'd like around that paper and I'm just going to let it fall down where it wants to basically so if you're cutting in everything is good then it really won't be a problem if your designer paper is plain it's even less of a problem but you can see it all sits really nicely and just brayering over the top as I've said will spread your ink out quite nicely and keep everything in good order then you go down to the bottom where your tab is for the rest of the red lined paste tape and just squidge it out like so along the bottom run the brayer across it and it sits there really really happily so if I just close this up now you can see where we've got to and there is the gatefold aspect of the journal with your closure which is integral to the whole thing so it adds a little bit of extra security so having got this far we now need to uh, put our papers back in front in exactly the same way 
as you've put your, your base and inner papers into the album. I'll do this side so that you see how it goes but it really is exactly the same. I tend to get, when I'm doing something like this, get everything organised so all I have to do then is get down to the layering and putting everything together and I've used the paper clips obviously to keep everything where I want it to be and as a general prompt as to how I want the layout of the album to progress. So I'm just going to flick over any excess of the red tape. Again, add my squidgy ink for a little bit of moving. I have taken all of these off but I suggest, you know, until you get the feel of it that you just do that gentle bit of measuring as you go along try desperately to avoid any areas that you've scored let it come down onto the card and just settle and then brayer and roller and that is the front cover of the album nicely completed there and all of the fold and spine of the album are clear and there's a nice border around for inking or anything else that you might like to do. And then I will do the inside. I'm just going to make sure that the um, ink is where it needs to be. The crewman is sat here having finished the windows, looking absolutely tired with the heat. So he's yawning his head off. You'll have to excuse him. You can't help it. It's very, very hot. But if he goes to sleep, rest assured, I've got my trusty pen here and I will be throwing it at him before the snores start to reverberate. Okay, so now we go here. I'm just going to settle this down in the same, same way. Like so. Some of the margins are a wee bit wider and that's down to my cutting but you know again it's up to you how you do it and I should have put that over that way but again I haven't because I'm talking and doing and there's not a lot I can do about that except to run which I'm going to do because there are no mistakes in crafting you just can't do that when it's too wide but I will find a, a narrower one and pop that across there like that it's not out of the way it does still do what you need it to do however so that's the, the front side and the back done now we can put that to one side and concentrate on decorating the envelopes now what I've done with these is already prepared the designer paper like I have with the body of the album and you do need this lovely flap area of the envelope. So if you picture you, you take your envelope out of the packet like so, you open up the flap, you put it to what would be the front side of the envelope and you want some really good strong adhesive on that side and I've done that on all of these. I'll take my um, designer sheets out because I don't want to be affecting them in any way. So that's going to be number two, number one and you can organise your album in this way so that it follows the way that you want it to. This will be our envelope three and then envelope four. Now I have used four on this one. I wanted the, the first one I did I only used three envelopes but I wanted this one to have a bit more going on. So there are my four envelopes which leaves me with my four designer papers which leaves me with four empty envelope so what you need to do is peel off 
the red line tape or whatever tape you've used. Add glue to the rest of the envelope and you lay it down on top of the back side of the next envelope if that makes sense. Very very carefully line up your envelope. The flap then becomes the hinge of the envelope. A little bit of bradding and so on and there is pages one and two and you do this by rote on each of your envelopes. It's a very, very clever, clever idea that I've not actually seen utilised before. And, you know, clearly if Dawn was the lady that came up with this notion, then I wouldn't want her not to have any credit. But I, I really don't know. I mean, when I watched her video, and I will leave a link to it, she talked about coming up with this idea. If that's the case, then it is an original because I've not seen it anywhere else. And um, it would be nice if you go along and check out her channel and watch her video too. Because, you know, apart from putting my stamp on it and doing things a tad differently to how she does, the concept of the envelopes certainly is something that I've taken completely from her video. This then lies down like so and there are your envelopes just like that and they all fit together really really nicely. This then becomes the flap that goes onto the back page of the album. So I'm just going to peel that off run this along. Now what I should have done, and I've got carried away with myself for the filming, is not put this sheet down. If you bear with me, I do apologise, because then all of these workings are hidden underneath that paper. But there are ways, again, to change it up and make the mistake a happy event. So I'm just going to lay that down, leaving equal gaps either side of the base of the album. Again, another little bit of brayering to make sure that everything sits nicely and we have our pages in the album all ready then to decorate. I'll do one side and then leave you to imagine that it's being done on both sides. I've got my four envelopes here for the other side and by the time they're anchored down they just sit like so within the body of the album and then as the pages are opened so it comes together. Right, so I'll, I'll decorate this side again and we'll go forward from there. You don't need to worry about this aspect of the envelope being open because you're laying your designer paper over the top like so and it really isn't going to show anything of the fact that, that there is a pocket in there. However, if at this point you wanted to trim your DSP to a narrower field, you could open up with a slither of a cut and turn this into very usable pockets, albeit narrow, because you do have to waste that aspect of the packet due to the fact that the envelope flap is on the other side, but it would give you a narrow what, two and a half inch pocket to put little bits and pieces in if that's what you wanted to do. So I'm going to take off my red tape just like before. 
be aware of the design paper and its patterning as I've already stated because if you put something on at this stage upside down you're going to be really really unhappy with yourselves and we just pop that mat on top of the envelope I'll start at the bottom I've tried to leave the same little area all the way around also at this point it's worth saying if you want to ink your envelopes clearly before now would be a good idea but I quite like to do all of that at the end anyway it's still possible and the mat for your envelopes as I've said is six and three quarters by four and three quarters and depending on how many envelopes you plan to use that's how many mats you're going to need to complete your album but this is really all there is to it now this final decoration to put it all together you've got your ribbon closure depending on where you want it to end up it's there it's integral to the album and you know you can either do it how I've done it here or as it was supposed to be under that bottom layer of DSP where you've placed your ribbon and then all the workings of the album are completely completely covered so there is one page allowing for drying time and that kind of thing you would then finish the album in the same way all the way through until both of the gate side aspects are complete it's not rocket science it is nice to have size guides of envelopes and that kind of thing it always makes things a whole lot easier and you know at the end of the day it's a handmade project will it be perfect even if you cut everything to within an inch of its life there will still be little errors that only you hopefully are aware of and it will still be a wonderful gift for a best friend or a mum or a relative it's just you know one of those lovely things that it's nice to do and think about the person that you're actually making it for as you go along that's what makes this kind of thing ultra ultra special and such a fabulous gift for someone that you care about now this has got some writing on it so i need to be aware yep that's that there and again and this is all you do for each and every page avoid your folds as much as you're able and brayer to spread the wet ink around as much as you can be aware that there will be a little bit of warping from the wet ink it can't be helped unfortunately it's even if you use the most expensive envelopes in the world you are still going to end up with that scenario unfortunately it's just the nature of the beast and something that we don't have much control over when we use uh, wet glue I suppose you could use the glue sticks but you do need something that's going to be substantial and is going to go the distance for you I mean these pages are very very decorative so you don't necessarily have to do a whole lot of extra work on them you could quite happily because it is such a beautiful kit just let the pictures speak for themselves and allow the recipient 
of the album to make their own choices. I'm just going to put this last one on because you'll get bored sat here listening to me talking and doing the same thing repetitively. Just bring these off like before. And then I'll show you some other aspects of the kit that can be utilised beautifully in the album if it's what you would want to do. And I like to put in um, little bits of extra for interest's sake and for a little bit of storage and that kind of thing of memorabilia. So that's that page done. So as I say, you would continue on, do the last page, you can see how warped it's got, unfortunately, and repeat that process on the other side, like so. So then you have a dual aspect of opening that follows all the way through the album. When you get to the back page, you've got because of my little faux pas here, these two areas that are going to have the, the um, tongue showing. But the options I've, I have are either to um, just put some an, another layer of paper over here, which I'm, I'm not opposed to doing, because it just adds to the overall strength of the um, album but what I would do is cut it to the size of the top and bottom of the envelope so it looks like a deliberate layering and that solves that problem really really well. I also have here envelopes from the kit that I've cut out and put together and all you have to do is just add and if I do it in front of you, add some adhesive to the side tags here. You don't need much. And this is just a quite heavy paper that I've utilised here. Just fold up that inner aspect like so. Get rid of any excess glue that peeps through. How dare it? And we'll just brayer that again for good measure. And then for the purposes of a closure, you can either just put a little glue dot at the top here and bottom, or indeed a Velcro dot if you want it to be something that is utilised as part of the storage. But they are beautiful, beautiful envelopes. And indeed, you could, in fact, do something to, of, like that to hide that little area as well. It's entirely up to you. But there, there's another envelope here from the kit in exactly the same design. Just beautiful, which I will put together off camera. As I say, I really don't want to bore you too much. And these can be utilised within the album or just with a paper clip at the back. Then there are these little pockets that you can just add to the foot of a page if you'd like to, which again is really, really effective. And those are there are four of those. You do have the width within the, the spine of the album to carry anything of that nature that you might choose to lay down on a page. But I will utilize the planar pages myself just to allow it to sit and be effective. So there are four of those pockets and they are all true to the original design if I get them all together and are just nice plain pocket fillers that you can use in your album. And then finally, there are these lovely, lovely tags. And there are three of them. 
and all I tend to do with these is back them onto cardstock and then as you saw with the Alice in Wonderland album that I showed in another video I would just pop these onto that back page held with a bulldog clip or something of that nature possibly put some more of the ribbon through it and that then would complete the album. If I put these out of the way for the moment and fit it all inside and we'll assume that it is all done and finished. Put those there. You would then close your album like so, have your ribbon and tie it off and that then is how thick your album would be at the end and an absolute delight to put together and to pass on or even keep for your own purposes. You can decorate the front page if you want to, it's entirely up to you and the back page is already covered, ready to um, be utilised and kept safe. If you want to go a, a step further again you can always mod podge the covers for an extra preservative and keep it all together in that way. So I hope this has proven helpful. If I've left any amazing gaps that you're not quite sure about then please feel free to message me under the video and I will get back to you just as soon as I possibly can. Thank you for sharing this time with me. Take care everyone. Happy crafting. Bye bye for now.